Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Java Graphics. Today we're going to be talking about collisions between rectangular shapes and circular shapes. Now in the prior videos in this series we talked about two rectangle collisions, two circle collisions. We also talked about how to make a rectangle move with the keyboard and how to make a circle move automatically. If you've missed any of those, I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can catch up on all of that stuff because it's required for the video that you're about to see. Anyway, let's get going. If you want to learn Java programming, or just programming in general, subscribe to this channel. We put out a lot of videos that range from beginner topics to more advanced programming concepts. Also, please like this video, share it with a friend, and write a comment as well. It goes a long way to help promote a channel like this. Now, let's get back to the video. So here we have a rectangle and a circle. The circle is going to be moving, the rectangle may or may not be moving, but we want to check to see if there's going to be a collision between the two of them. The first thing we have to consider are the eight different zones that the circle can be in in relation to the rectangle. And here they are. It could be in the upper left, the top, upper right, and so on. We're going to consider each one individually. Let's first consider the upper left zone. If the circle is in this zone, in other words, if the center of the circle is left of the rectangle and above the rectangle, then all we need to do to check to see if the circle is colliding with the rectangle is check the distance between the center of the circle and the upper left point of our rectangle, which is at a coordinate x, y. And if that distance is less than the radius, we have a collision. In this zone, if the circle is above the rectangle but horizontally it's between the left edge and the right edge of the rectangle, in that case, all we need to do is check the vertical distance between the center of the circle and the upper edge of our rectangle. If that distance is less than the radius, we have a collision. In the upper right zone, it's similar to the upper left zone. The center of the circle is to the right and above our rectangle. We just need to check the distance between the center of the circle and the upper right portion of our rectangle, which has a coordinate x plus the width of the rectangle, comma y. Of course, in this zone, where the center of the circle is left of the rectangle, but vertically it's between the top and the bottom edges, all we need to do is check the horizontal distance between the center of the circle and the left edge of our rectangle. Same thing with this zone. All we need to do is check the horizontal distance between the center of the circle and the right edge of the rectangle, which has an x-coordinate of x plus the width. And of course, in this zone, we check the distance between the center of the circle and the bottom left coordinate of our rectangle. In this zone, we check the vertical distance between the center of the circle and the bottom of the rectangle. And last but not least, here we'll check the distance between the center of the circle and the bottom right corner of the rectangle. Let's head over to NetBeans and, and make this work. So here we are in NetBeans. Now, as as you can see, uh, if you've watched the prior videos, I've taken out the 10 bouncing balls. I've made it back to only one bouncing ball. I've also added back our rectangle, and we can move it around. As you can see, the ball is going through the rectangle. I've done all this to simplify it because we only want to concentrate on collisions between the rectangle and the ball. And now, since the ball is going through the rectangle, obviously we haven't added our collision detection yet, which we're about to do right now. So let me show you some code that I actually modified. So in the detect collision method in the ball that we did, we did in a prior video, I actually took out the distance formula. I put the distance formula into its own method because I want to reuse it for this video. And I changed the detect collision method between two balls and I've made it where I'm using this new method that I've created. The other thing that I've done is in the rectangle class, I added these four accessor methods so we can actually get x, y width and height. Now, in the ball class, we have this detect collision method, and it checks for a collision between two circles, two balls. What I want to do is I'm going to overload this method. Overloading, just in case anyone's not aware, means creating another method with the same name, just a different parameter signature. So I'm going to create this method. It's going to still be public. It's going to return a Boolean. And the parameter, instead of a ball, is going to be a rectangle. We'll call it R. R. And here we go. So now what we want to do is we need to check the distance between the center of the circle and some point on the rectangle. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to get the center of our circle. And of course, I'm using the methods that I wrote previously, get center x and get center y, which is basically the upper left portion of our circle, the upper left point, plus the radius. Now we want to get the information from the rectangle. Okay, so now that we've gotten all the information, let me put a comment here. Okay, now that we've gotten all the information, we want to check to see where the circle lies in relation to our rectangle. So let's create some Boolean variables that'll hold that information. All right, so now we have these Boolean set. So we're just going to check to see uh, which combination of these are true. Now, the first thing we're going to check to see is if the circle is in the upper left portion of our rectangle. Now, what do we want to do? Let's go back to our diagram. If the circle is in the upper left portion of our rectangle, we want to check the distance between the center of our circle and the upper left portion of our rectangle. If that distance is less than the radius, we're going to return true because we have a collision. And there's the code. Let's just take a look at it real quick. We're checking the distance between the center of our circle and the upper left portion of our rectangle. And if that distance is less than our radius, diameter over two, we're going to return true. Otherwise, we'll return false. So we're just going to return the outcome of this Boolean statement, of this less than statement. Now, if the circle is not above or to the left, let's check another case. So what do we want to do here? Let's go back to our diagram. The circle is above and to the right of our rectangle. Therefore, we want to check the distance between the center of our circle and this time the upper right portion of our rectangle. So I'm going to copy this code. But instead of checking the upper left portion of our rectangle, we want the upper right portion. So we just have to add width to our x coordinate. Okay? So this checks to see if the circle is above and to the left or above and to the right. There's also another possibility. What happens if the circle is just above, not left or right? Well, let's go back to our diagram. That's this case. And here, what we want to do is check to see the distance between the center of our circle, and we're going to drop a perpendicular, and this coordinate right here is going to have the same x coordinate as the center of our circle. The y coordinate will be the top of the rectangle. So we're going to check the distance between the center of our circle and this point here, which has a coordinate of the circle's x, comma, the y for the rectangle. So let's check this here. We're going to return the distance between the center of our circle and then the x coordinate will be the same since we're dropping a perpendicular and the top of our rectangle. That takes care of if the circle is above the rectangle. Now what happens if the circle is below the rectangle? All right, so this case is the circle is below and to the left. Let's go back and check our diagram again. So here's our diagram. The circle is below and to the left. We want to check the distance between the center of our circle and the bottom left corner of our rectangle, which has this coordinate. So here we go. We're going to check the center of our circle with the left edge of the rectangle and the bottom edge of the rectangle. Now let's check to see if the circle is below and to the right. And this is the diagram. We're going to check the distance between the center of our circle and the bottom right corner of our rectangle. Center of our circle, bottom right corner. The right corner would be Rx plus Rw, and the bottom would be Ry plus Rh. Now let's check to see if the circle is just below, not left, not right, just below. Let's look at our diagram again. This covers this scenario, where all we want to do is bring a perpendicular up to the bottom of our rectangle. So again, the x-coordinate is not going to change. 
the point this coordinate right here is going to be the x value of our circle comma the bottom of our rectangle and this is what the code looks like again we're checking the distance between the center of our circle and the point where it intersects the perpendicular intersects the bottom of our rectangle which means we have the same x coordinate because we're moving vertically and here's the bottom of our rectangle so here we've checked to see all six zones either above or below the rectangle however there are some other cases we can check to see if the circle is just left of our rectangle let's look at our diagram remind ourselves what to do we're in this scenario now here we want to check the distance between the center of the circle and this point which is a perpendicular from the circle center horizontally to the left edge of our rectangle that means that the x value will change here but the y value will not change so the coordinates of this point are the x value of the left edge of the rectangle comma the y value of the center of the circle and there it is the y value of the center of the circle the x value of the left edge of the rectangle now let's check to see if the circle is directly to the right of the rectangle where in this situation here you can see again we're dropping a perpendicular to the right edge of the rectangle the y value will not change the x value will be the right edge of our rectangle okay so that takes care of all eight scenarios there is one other scenario technically that could happen and that's if none of these are true in other words the circle is not above not below not left not right that means it's kind of overlapping the rectangle now probably that won't happen but you never know with some more advanced features like frame rate and how fast it's moving i guess it could happen So as you can see by the comment, if we get here, the circle center is overlapping the rectangle, in which case, of course, there's a collision, so we'll just return true. So now we're going to try and use this method to detect for a collision and then affect the ball's path. Okay, so now that we've detected for a collision, let's actually use that in our move method. So here we go to the move method. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is we're checking to see if we have a collision with our, our edge of the screen. That's fine. We'll do that first. But now what we want to do is we want to check to see if we're colliding with our rectangle. Unfortunately, in this method, we don't know about the rectangle object. So that's a simple fix. We just pass it in. And as you can see, I've added the parameter rectangle to our move method. So now we know about the rectangle and we can check to see if we have a collision. So we just need to say if we have a collision with our rectangle, then what do we want to do? Well, let's keep things simple. Let's not worry about bouncing it in the right direction, which, you know, whether it should just go, whether it should go in this direction or that. Let's just, for simplicity's sake, change the direction of our ball and make it go back from whence it came. And there we go. Now the only other thing we need to do is go back to our main driver class and where we call move for the ball, we have to pass in our rectangle. And that should do it. Let's run the program and see how it looks. So there's our ball. Let's get our rectangle above and there it bounces. Okay. And let's check to see if it bounces this way. It does. Let's check to see if it bounces this way. It does. Now it does look a little weird. Again, we're not checking to see which direction the ball should move after it hits the rectangle. We're just changing the direction. Like so. And that looks perfect to me. Now, if we want to make this a little more realistic, we could say that if the ball hits either the right or the left edge, it's going to bounce off as follows, where the vertical direction is going to stay the same and only the horizontal direction will change. Of course, if it hits the bottom or one of the points or the top, it'll just return in the direction that it originally came from. So in order to do that, we actually can't just return a true or a false that we are colliding. We need to return where we're colliding. So to make things simple, we're going to just return a string. Now, I know it's probably better to return an integer, but for explanation purposes, we're going to go with a string. So here, 
we're checking to see if the circle is above and to the left. And instead of returning a true or a false, what we're going to do is we're actually going to have in brackets, we're going to check to see if the distance is less than the radius to the point of the rectangle. If it is, then what we're going to do is we're going to return reverse. Else, we'll return none. Okay, so this means that if we have a collision with the upper left point of our rectangle, we're going to return a code of reverse, otherwise we're going to return none, meaning no collision. And we're going to do the same thing here. Okay, this is the upper right corner of our rectangle. Again, if it hits the upper right, we want to completely reverse the direction of the ball. Returning none means there is no collision. Now, if the circle is above, it's going to be the same thing. If the circle is below and to the left, same thing. If it's below and to the right, same thing. Below, same thing. Now, if it's to the left, we're going to almost do the same thing. Let's still do our if statement. But this time, we don't want to return reverse. We want to return, let's return side for side bounce. And the same thing for the right side. We're going to return a side bounce. And in this case, if I could spell, that would help. There we go. I'm a computer science guy. We can't spell. Um, in that case, in this case, if we get here, the circle center is overlapping. In this case, let's just return. Actually, you know what we should probably do? We should probably, just in case it's inside the rectangle, which I guess technically could happen, not only should we reverse, but we should really say inside. That way we can kind of maybe do a little correction and have the ball move a little bit further away from the rectangle to make sure that we don't get any kind of weird scenarios where the, the circle just kind of stays inside the rectangle. So anyway, so we have these cases. So we're either colliding. None means we don't have a collision. If we're colliding and we return the word reverse, that means the ball should go back the way it came. If we're colliding and we return the word side, it should change the direction of the x only not the vertical direction and if we return uh, a collision inside that means the ball somehow got caught inside the rectangle and we should maybe move it away a little bit further so now let's head over to our move method and here it is okay obviously this doesn't work anymore because we're now returning a string so instead of saying if detect collision let's get the collision result is going to be equal to detect collision and then we're going to check the collision result and we're going to say if if it's equal to reverse that means we want to go back in the direction we came exactly like this and if we hit a side that means that what we want to do is we only want to change the y, uh, I'm sorry, not the y, the x direction. And we'll copy this. Okay, because the y direction is going to remain the same. Now, we're handling a, a case that may not come up, but just in case, else if collision result dot equals, and we'll say inside. So if we're actually stuck inside the rectangle, what we're going to do is we are going to change this, but instead of adding, instead of moving the circle in the other, in the opposite direction, let's move it a little further in the opposite direction. So we'll say x, new x is going to be x, not plus the velocity, it's going to be plus, say, three times the velocity. And we'll say y equals three times. I'm just picking numbers here. I'm not sure if this is going to be a, a good value or not. We may have to tweak this. But this is basically saying if the circle is somehow stuck inside the rectangle, let's move it a little further away. That way we don't have to worry about it staying stuck. Probably it's not going to happen. So let's run this and see how it looks. So there's our ball. 
And that was a good bounce. I like that. Let's see what happens if it hits the top. Uh, it does. It goes back in the direction it came. Perfect. Let's check the left side. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Let's check the bottom. Looks good. All right. Everything looks great. Now we can write a little ping pong game if you want. You have all the skills necessary. I hope you learned something from watching this video. Please remember to subscribe and share this video with others who are learning Java programming. Thanks for watching and take care everyone.